How's it going guys? Anxious Cynic back again with another Blender tutorial. And today we're going to get into how to animate with Blender. Uh, just as a heads up, we're not going to be doing any actual animation. We're just going to go over how to go about animating in Blender. I know that might sound kind of disappointing, but you know, there's a few things to cover in order to go over the process of animation. So the first thing I want to do is note some of the things about our timeline and how to use Blender and how to set up for animating. So the first thing is down here is your timeline. If you followed along with me in the first part and changed your left and right click options, then you can right click in order to drag the cursor up and down on the timeline. If you didn't follow me on that step, it may be left click for you. So just keep that in mind and uh, in mind in the future as well. Okay, so by default, our timeline is set for 250 frames. If you notice down here, we have a start at one and an end at 250 and this is our current frame on the timeline which is frame one i can hit this arrow and go up and as you'll see the timeline cursor moves and we can go up and whatever this frame is is where our cursor is selected alternatively you can go over here to your render tab and we have the frame range section and under this you have the start frame the end frame and the frame step which are all these three things here and just uh, to set us up a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 300 frames and I'm going to change our frame rate, which is by default 24 frames per second. I'm just going to bump it up to 30. Uh, you can use whatever you prefer. 24 frames per second is actually like the film standard for major motion picture and whatnot in general. So now that we've got that set up, we technically have a 10 second timeline. 30 frames per second at 300 frames is 10 seconds. If I remember correctly, I'm not going to do the math in my head right now. Uh, you may notice over here that I have updated MC Prep. There is a new version of it, so I encourage you to check that out if you want to. I have noticed a couple of glitches, though, which I haven't had time to look into too much yet. So if you want to upgrade, uh, do it at your own peril, I guess. But I hopefully will do an updated tutorial on some of the changes that have taken place with that add-on. In any case, uh, now we want to learn how to get into animating our character now that we've got our timeline set up. So... The first thing we need to know is that Blender has different modes. So right now, by default, you're in object mode. And if you click on this, you'll see that you have different options here. And this is context sensitive depending on what you have selected. Currently, I have Steve's body selected. So we get all of these kind of uh, mesh options for a character. So to give you an example of this, I'm going to click on, let's say, Steve's arms. And I'm going to hit the tab key. And when I do that, it takes us into edit mode. And generally, you're not going to really need this unless you're doing modeling or actually changing the geometry of your scene. But you'll notice all these lines come up and we have what are called vertexes or vertices. And if I select one, as you can see there, I can hit the G key to grab it and I can actually alter the geometry of the scene. I'm actually hitting right click to cancel that. But if I left click, you'll see that it saves it. And Steve's arm now has a dent in it. Let's go ahead and undo that. Uh, so that's basically, you know, the basics of how to go between modes in Blender. But to animate our character, we want to go into what is known as pose mode. And I'm going to click on the bones here. And that's what these lines are. These are called bones. And they look like this because there is an option in Blender where you can use other objects as a shape for a bone and you get custom bone shapes. By default, we're in object mode right now. If I hit tab and I go into edit mode and I'm going to hit Z to go into wireframe, then you'll notice, let's go ahead and hit A and A to select all of the bones. You'll see all these bones. This is the actual skeleton of the mesh here. And this is Steve's, you know, armature as it's known in at least Blender. I'm not 100% sure if that's the same for all 3D programs, but this is Steve's actual skeleton. These are what the bones look like themselves. And uh, let's go back into object mode. And now you see these are the custom bone shapes that uh, whoever made the rig, I can't ever remember his name. I apologize what he gave it. Uh, I personally am not really a big fan of the custom bone shapes. Maybe I'll eventually warm up to it. I kind of just prefer the original look to them, the basic skeletal frame for whatever reason. But, you know, that's a personal preference, I guess. And I'm going to hit Z to go back into solid mode but i'm going to come over here and bring it back into material so anyway we have our armature selected and we want to animate this so if i hit tab it takes us into edit mode of course but i can either come down here and click on this and go to pose mode or i can use the uh, keyboard shortcuts and hit control tab and that takes us into pose mode without having to click on this down here so that's just something to note 
So obviously we're using the rig that comes with MC Prep for this tutorial. So some of the things we're going to cover here may not be the same for you if you're using, uh, you know, an another rig from some pack like the Rim Denise. I think that's how you say it. I keep getting corrected and I can never remember. <laughs> uh, so it may be different for you, but for this tutorial, we're covering this one. So this is not the same for everyone. Anyway, so what we have here are the controller bones on the character himself and you have this control panel here. So what this control panel does is you actually have a light. If you can see it right here, this is the face light on the character. Uh, I don't really know if it's 100% necessary, but it comes with the rig and I usually just leave it alone. You can grab this if you click on it and we're in pose mode and I can hit G and I can bring that up or down and whatnot. And that same thing applies to all of these. So what you have here, it's kind of hard to see this, so I apologize. Uh, but what we have here is the right arm and foot and the left arm and foot. And you'll notice the this is the Fancy Feet rig, so the Fancy Feet option is on. You can look into that if you want to know what that is. We're not going to really worry about it. It's not that consequential. Uh, anyway, um, so you'll notice that the arms are both set to FK and the feet are both set to IK. So at risk of uh, making myself sound dumb, I'm pretty sure FK means forward kinematics and IK means inverse kinematics, if I'm getting those terms correct. And basically the difference there is if you're coming from Minimator, then you're aware of how, uh, you know, when you move things, the tips of the arms don't stay where they are or the feet don't stay where you have them placed. The whole object moves. Well, that's technically FK or forward kinematics if I'm using the proper term. Uh, and IK is actually what helps to make those things kind of planted. So if I grab this, you'll notice Steve is kind of in a different position here because I straightened him out. Uh, basically all I did was, let's see if I can grab him. I'm gonna hit the Alt G key. And when you hit Alt G, that actually undoes or it sends the character, that bone that you have selected back to its original like rest position. So uh, let's just say, for instance, I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna rotate his arm there. And let's just say I've done stuff and I don't wanna undo that, I just wanna reset his position. So I can hit Alt R because I rotated it and that sends it back to the rest position and that works for all of them. That works for if I grab him over here with G, then I hit Alt G and that sends it back to where it's supposed to be. And it works for scale as well. If I were to scale this up, I can hit Alt S and that sends it back to the original scale position. So uh, that's a way if you do make changes and you don't want to undo them, you just want to reset the position of the character. You just hit Alt and whatever the relationship is, whether it's the grab translation or the, the scale or the rotation, then you just hit Alt and that corresponding letter to undo it without actually undoing other changes. So anyway, uh, what you'll notice here is we have Steve in his basic default position. I'm gonna select the body bone here or whatever it's actually called. And I'm gonna hit G to grab and move them around. And you'll notice here that the feet are trying to stay where they are. They're not grabbing and moving along with the body, right? But the arms, however, are not. They're going along with the body. Well, that's the difference between FK and IK. If I take the arm, let's see if we can take the left arm here. I'm gonna drag this down to IK and then I'm gonna grab him and move him, and then you'll see that the arm now wants to stay in place and whatnot. And the cool thing about having these as uh, options here is that we can keyframe these as well. So at some points we may want the arm to be IK, uh, sometimes we may want it to be FK, and I'm pretty sure we can keyframe these and have that change throughout the animation as we need it and how we want to animate. Okay, so another little tip here is if you're coming from Minimator especially and you're used to kind of like grabbing the widgets or gizmos on the screen and animating things and you don't want to get into the whole keybinds uh, topic or whatever, you don't want to get used to that just yet, I recommend that you do, but let's say you don't. You'll notice the, the gizmo that I talked about before and how we can grab this and move it around. Well, that's turned on and off by this button here. If I click this button, then those things go away. If I click it again, then they come back. So I'm gonna select his left arm here, the left upper arm or shoulder. And by default, what we're on is the transformation manipulator, the translate tools. And that's why you have those arrows there. If I click on this one though, then we'll get these circles and this is our rotation ones. And we can just click and drag them around just like you would in Minimator. 
Now I'm going to hit Alt R and reset that position. And if we click on this one, this is actually the scale one. And we can click on it and scale in either direction of whichever axis. So that's a way you can do that visually. I'm going to be using the keybinds mostly. Uh, so I recommend you learn those and keep up with them. But if you don't, then it's all the same. It's just one's visual and one's uh, intuitively on the keyboard. So uh, that's up to you how you want to do it. In any case, uh, a few things about this particular rig. So if I click on the mouth here, and that's what, whoa, <laughs> that's what this uh, option is here, this big square, I can click or hit the G key. And when I grab this and move it around, you'll see that we have this going on. So this is another little change that I've already made. If I come back over here to our control panel, this little parameter here by default is up here at the top. And what that does is changes the shape of the mouth. If I grab this and move it around now, you'll see that the mouth is actually sharp and, and rounded and whatnot. Personally, I kind of prefer the square. That's why I have it changed. So I'm bringing that back down and then you get the squareness and you can actually kind of bring it anywhere in between and get somewhere in between those shapes. But I just bring it all the way down to square because to me, it looks more Minecrafty. So if I do that, I can just grab this and drag it around and there's shape keys that define like what position the mouth should be in uh, with the position of this bone. So I can do like that and it's good to go. However, if I scale this, then it actually changes whether or not the character is smiling or frowning or just straight faced or whatever. And if I rotate it, or actually let's, uh, let's scale this so he's smiling. And if I rotate this, then you'll see it changes the position of that middle like pivot point or whatever to get different expressions. Alternatively, you can click on these individual bones here and manipulate things on an individual level without having to just use those shape keys. You also have these two bones here which control the teeth. You can bring them up and down and of course you don't want to go too far down. Uh, so I'm going to hit this and I'm going to hit Alt G, Alt S and Alt R to make sure that it's back in its default position just because I want to. You may notice I also brought the eyelids on the eyes uh, in to make him look just a little bit more Minecrafty, and uh, or at least in my opinion. And the way I did that is these bones up here. If I click on this one and I'm going to hold shift and click on this one, and that way I can manipulate both at the same time, or you can do them individually. It's up to you. If I hit G, then I can drag this around, and you'll notice that if I go off to the sides, it actually changes the angle of this. So I may not want it to do that if I'm just trying to animate like a blink or something. So I'm going to hit the Z key so it binds me to the Z axis and that way I can move this around and it's just straight up and down and we can animate the eyelid that way. And of course you have these here for the bottoms and whatnot and it all does the same thing and I can hit the Z key to bind that as well. These squares up here actually manipulate the position and the uh, rotation of the eyebrows. If I hit the scale key, then it actually provides bends. If I rotate, then it does the same thing as with the mouth and changes that middle bend point there. You can see that bone moving. So those are the basic like face keys. You also have this one here, which controls the pupils. And there's no limitation on this, it seems. So they kind of go crazy. Uh, so just try to keep it within range of the eyes the way you would want it to be. Alternatively, you can click on these individually and move the pupils individually. If you rotate this, you may notice that there's like little arrows here. If it's if you can see that, it's kind of difficult here, but if you got this rig on yours, you can see it. If you rotate this, you can rotate the eyes. If you scale it, you can scale the pupils, etc. So those are the basics of how to control the character and whatnot. So let's go ahead and try to get into how to animate the character. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get Steve back into that standing position. So what I'm going to do is grab his body bone here. I'm going to hit G and Z just to move him up and down. And I'm just going to move him so he's actually kind of standing like a normal person should be. And now that we've got that set up, I'm just going to go ahead and give Steve a slight wave or just moving his arm kind of motion. So in order to do that, we need to be able to set keyframes. And you may notice that nothing I'm doing is really changing anything. I can scrub through the timeline and nothing's happening over time like you would want with your animation. So what we have to do is make a change and apply keyframes. At the start of our animation though, maybe I want Steve to just be in this position. So what I'm going to do is hit the A key and that's going to deselect whatever I have selected. And when I hit it again, it's going to select everything. Uh, this may be somewhat undesirable if it selects more things than you want it to, but we're just going to go with it. So I have every bone selected and I want to put a keyframe in. So I'm going to hit the I key on my keyboard 
And then you get this insert keyframe menu. And we have location, rotation, and scaling. And then you have lock rot, lock scale, and lock rot scale. And all that is is location rotation, location scale, and location rotation scale. So an interesting thing about Blender is you can actually set individual keyframe types. So if I move something and I have it set to only rotate, then if I change the position of it, then it's not gonna save that information. It's only gonna save it if I rotate it. So for this, I'm gonna actually just insert and I'm gonna put lock rot scale just to cover it all. If I make any changes, then it should cover everything. Uh, it's up to you, you know, whatever you're animating and however you're doing it. Uh, but that's just what I'm gonna go with to kind of cover the bases. So the thing is here, if I do that, so now you'll notice that there's a yellow line on the timeline and that's our keyframe. Uh, so I'm gonna move to frame 30 here and let's just say I want to rotate the arm. If I can select it, there we go. And I'm just gonna bring the arm out and let's just say I wanna rotate this. So I'm just gonna bring my view over here. I'm gonna hit R and rotate. So he just has his arm like that. And uh, let's go ahead and go to the front view here. Okay, so I set our keyframe and then I moved the arm at frame 30. So if I hit play down here, alternatively, you can hit Alt A, as you can see there, it says shortcut is Alt A. I can hit play and nothing happened. So the reason this is, is we didn't tell Blender to set a keyframe. Once again, if you're coming from Minimator, you're used to the keyframes automatically being generated. Well, Blender doesn't do that by default. However, we can tell it to, and in order to do so, I'm gonna just go ahead and move us back up to frame 30. And you may notice this little record button icon down here. So what it's called is the automatic keyframe insertion for objects and bones. I said that weird. Uh, so I'm gonna click that. And now when I move something, let's go ahead. I keep accidentally moving my 3D cursor, I apologize. Uh, if I rotate this and then rotate this, then you'll notice down here we now have the keyframe. So that tells Blender that every time we make a change, we want it to be recorded to a keyframe. All right, so let's watch our change here. As you can see there, when I scrubbed back, it actually showed the change there. And if I hit play, then Steve brings his arm up. And now we have animation happening. Another little nifty thing is if you click this uh, key here, the automatic keyframe insertion using active keying set only, if we tick that, then this field here can be set to only certain types of keyframes. So if I click this, then you'll see that we have these options here and I can actually set this to just say, let's say uh, we only want to record the rotation. So now if I go, let's just say to frame 50 and I wanna grab this bone here, let's grab his arm and I'm gonna rotate it. Let's just say on the X axis, hitting the X key. So we're gonna do like that and just say for some reason, maybe I accidentally hit the G key and I grabbed it and I moved his arm over here and I'm like, oh no, that's not what I want. Well, with this key lock set to rotation, when I go back and I hit play, then you'll see that the only information that that keyframe saved was the rotation information. It did not save when I moved the arm over there. So that can be like a little helpful way to animate without accidentally changing things you don't want to change and then having to go back and figure out what you did wrong or whatever. Uh, personally, I haven't really used that feature that much, not that I've animated much in Blender, but it's there if you want it. And then of course you can just click this X to make it go away and turn this off entirely if you don't want to use that feature at all. Okay, so now that we've got our keyframes in and we're animating Steve and things are happening, what if we need to kind of figure out what our keyframes are doing and edit our keyframes and whatnot? As you can see, we only have a visual representation of it in the timeline, uh, we can't actually see our keyframes. Well, Blender actually uses different types of interfaces and different types of windows. If you recall from the last tutorial where I showed that when you click on this, you can go to different viewpoints. Well, Blender actually has some default layouts. Now, to keep in mind, you can customize Blender's layout any way you want to. You can drag windows around and do all sorts of things. If you watch the actual like Born CG tutorials, Blender tutorials, uh, then you might know some about that. I'm not gonna go into it right now, but just safe to say all of this can be customized. You can have this layout be any way you want it to, but we're just gonna use the default uh, templates for now. So I'm gonna go up here and click on this button and I'm gonna go to the animation layout. So now we got a pretty different looking screen. And as you can see here, we have our usual 
uh, 3D view and I'm just gonna go ahead and change this to material because I wanna see what I'm working with. Over here you have the camera perspective and it is by default in wireframe. If I hit the Z key, that's gonna take it and put it into solid view, but I'm just gonna leave it in wireframe for now. So that's basically just showing us what our camera in the scene is doing. And this here allows us to actually animate the, what's happening in the scene. So over here you have a couple of new windows that you haven't seen before. This is called the Dope Sheet, and uh, it's kind of a weird name, but what this is is a summary, a visualization of our keyframes, where they are in the scene and what they're doing, etc. And down here you have the Graph Editor, and right now it's set to F-Curve. You also have a, no a mode called Drivers, but we don't need that right now. It's not really related to uh, animating uh, in the way that we're talking about in this tutorial. In any case, uh, what you have here is the dope sheet summary at the very top. And to my understanding, what this is, is it's showing you where keyframes occur on the timeline. All right. And down here you see upper L and this is our upper left arm. And then you have lower L and that's the lower left arm. These names will change depending on what kind of rig you're using and what the bones are called. So just keep that in mind. For us in this rig, it's called upper L or upper dot L and then lower dot L and whatnot. And you'll notice that we have all these keyframes here. Well, this is because I selected all the bones and set an initial keyframe for the base position at the, you know, at the zero frame, the first frame of our animation. So we have all these and you'll notice that the only ones that have other keyframes are the, the arms, you know, that we animated earlier. So to give you an example of how this is working, you have three keyframes here, but technically we have four movements. We have three movements on the upper left arm and one movement on the lower left arm. So if I grab this, I'm gonna just click away so that none of these are selected. I'm gonna grab the lower left and I'm gonna hit G and I'm gonna drag it out. And you will see here that now there is another keyframe on the summary, but there's only one keyframe here. So this up here is a summary of all the keyframes that we have in the scene. And down here, it's the keyframe for the actual body part that we're editing. If you're coming from Minimator, this is a lot more complicated, I understand, but it gives you a lot more control. You actually control the individual keyframes for each part and its movement. And if we drop this down, you have location and rotation keyframes. And these lines between these here, I think are telling you that nothing happens between these keyframes. Basically they're the same. So if there's a line between them, that means there's no change between these keyframes. And if it's empty, that means there's a change between the keyframes. So again, that might sound complicated, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. And um, hopefully I'm not doing a disservice by explaining it that way. So what you have here is when I move that, you may recall that if I grab this keyframe, let's just move it way over here. So this lower L is actually the bend in the arm. If you recall that I made his arm bend there. And now that I moved this keyframe over, it bends quicker and then the arm continues going out. If I grab this and drag it over, then you'll see it happens over a longer period of time and it actually doesn't finish bending until after the arm is up to this point. So that's how you can control that. And again, this is just your summary of all the keyframes. And these are the ones that are actually controlling what's happening. You can alternatively, you know, click on these and grab them and drag them around. And it should only affect whatever keyframe is related to what it's representing here or multiple keyframes if that is the case. Let's just say if I grab this and drag it over and put it in line here right there that was kind of had to finagle that in uh, and now if i click on this and drag it well then it moves all of them because it's moving the summary of the keyframes that are on this frame okay so now we have the f curve editor here and you'll notice that the only thing we have is the upper dot l keyframes if i click on the uh, bone here then we have the uh, lower dot l if i click on this one then we have the upper dot l and this is showing us basically the movement of that object in the scene. So another thing to note here is if I click on these, like the actual name here, not the keyframe per se, but the actual name, lower.l, you can notice over here on our character that those bones are getting selected. If I, whatever I click on, uh, it actually selects that bone. And if you click on it in the, the character here, then you'll notice that it selects it over here. So you kind of have that cross uh, check between these two things and you know you get that visual representation in any case we're gonna go to our lower dot L and I'm gonna expand this down here in the F curve editor and we've only changed its rotation so if I click on let's just say the X rotation then you'll see that this line highlights 
if I click on the Y, etc., then uh, you get these highlights here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this keyframe over here in the dope sheet, and you'll notice that now these keyframes are highlighted in the F curve editor. Well, this kind of looks like uh, transitions in Minimator. If you're used to Minimator and how the uh, transitions work, this looks kind of like an ease in and ease out. Uh, but it's kind of deceptive. That's not actually what this is doing, at least not to my understanding. What this is doing is actually representing the movement in the scene and the value of that movement. So let's see if I can give you an example of that. If, uh, if I take this, I'm going to grab this handle here and I'm going to hit G to grab it. And I'm going to move this like this and you'll see that it's actually creating this curve. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's changing like the speed of the movement and making it more gradual exactly. What it's actually doing is moving it uh, on like a positive or negative value in the scene. So if I just grab this and let's just say we, we go up like that, then we watch that bend and it just happens like so. And it, it kind of happens, you know, it does kind of make it more gradual or sudden or whatever, but it's controlling how that moves in the scene. So uh, let's see if I can give you a better example of this, perhaps with, let's go ahead and I'm going to hit the delete key on our lower dot L. And then that's going to have delete keyframes, clean keyframes and all this stuff. I'm just going to delete the keyframe. And now the arm stays straight. And basically what we get is it goes out and then it turns like so. Uh, so let's actually just go ahead and get rid of this. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a basic, more basic movement here. I'm going to hit Alt R and put that into place. And I'm just going to rotate the arm on the X axis like this. So it's just going to come up. Let's go ahead and just give this a new bend here like so. And now we just have this movement here where he just brings his arm up and it bends. All right. So I'm going to select the upper dot L. And let's go ahead and just deselect everything, upper.l, and I'm going to select this keyframe. And I want to look at the X rotation, I believe, right there. And as you can see, that's the one that has the most movement. And now when I click this handle, I can move this around like so. So to give you an example of what's going on here, so when I do this, and you can see this line is kind of gradual, and when I bring it up, he just linearly brings his arm up to that position. So if I grab this handle and I bring it down to where that falls below this kind of uh, middle line here, this is, as you can see on the numbers here, and let's see if I can drag this up real quick. So you have this zero position, you have negative 0.5 and then positive 0.5. So what this is telling you is the value of that movement in the scene. So if I bring this back, then you'll notice that the arm actually goes back first now and then shoots up to that position. So you are kind of controlling the speed, but you're also controlling uh, where in the scene that value is. So if I bring this up, then you'll see that the arm doesn't go quite as far back. It just kind of swings back slightly and then goes up. So that's something to learn. You know, I'm not that familiar with it. It's just to give you an idea so you're not 100% confused by this. Uh, that's how that works. And if I bring this up back to how it was, then you'll see that now the arm just moves straight back up. The way it is and of course these curves represent exactly how it's going to do that and the speed at which like this is kind of more of a gradual and then suddenly uh, goes into it uh, but that's the basics of how uh, you can use the f-curve editor to kind of alter your animation and one final thing i want to cover is the keyframe transitions so this is kind of similar to minimator but not quite if i have one of these selected or multiple selected or whatever and i hit the t key then you have these interpolation options under the set keyframe interpolation. So by default, I think that the keyframes are set to Bezier, if that's how you pronounce that. Uh, and that gives you these handles and the kind of the ease in, ease out kind of look. Let me hit T again to bring that up. And then you have linear, which is just linear, like straight line movement. If you're familiar with blend, uh, Minimator, then uh, you kind of have an idea of what these are doing. And then you have constant, which is in Minimator, the instant keyframe transition where it goes from one value straight up to the next with no linear movement in between. You also have these easing by strength options and these dynamic effects, which kind of provide some of the similar transition effects you may be familiar with if you're coming from Minimator. Uh, I'm not going to really go into these right now. You can play with them if you want to. Uh, but those are basically like uh, ways to quickly set up what kind of keyframes you're using. Okay, guys, I think that's going to just about cover it for the basics of how to animate in Blender. I'm going to go back to our default view, and someone requested that I showed how to change the skin of the character. 
Uh, so one thing I want to cover though, let's go ahead and select our character, the body. I'm going to have to hit control tab to go back to object mode. And then I'm going to click on his body and you can see there slightly that his body is now highlighted. Uh, I think the MC prep has now provided a feature where you can change the skin, but I have not used it yet. Once again, like I said, I may do an updated tutorial on it if I can figure it out for myself. Uh, but just to give you a basic idea of how you might want to change the skin on your character, uh, I'm going to go over here to our tabs and with the body selected, we now have this checkered circle icon. If I click on that, this is our materials tab and this is telling us like what the material or the texture or whatever is for the object that we have selected. So as you can see here, Steve.main is selected by default and that is the Steve skin that comes with this particular rig. Uh, so I think there is a way that we can change it from here. So as you can see here, if I click on this, then we have the textures that are associated with our scene. I can scroll up, I can scroll down. And right now we have Steve.main, which is what our character is using. I can uh, change it to something else, let's say tall grass, and that makes Steve turn into tall grass there. Um, but this is kind of only affecting the body. So what I'm gonna do is open up the node editor and I'm gonna do so by grabbing this cross hatched area here. I'm gonna drag it down to give us a new window. And as you can see, it's duplicated our window there, but we're gonna come over here and we're gonna go up to node editor and we're gonna go to this. And as you can see, we have all these nodes and this is basically what is comprising the texture and the materials for our character here. This looks a little bit complicated. I know it's probably daunting, but for now to simplify this, we're only gonna be focusing on this first one, which is the image texture for what our character is gonna look like. So I'm gonna go up here and I think there's probably more ways than one to change this. I'm just gonna do it the way that I know how that works for me. Uh, this is the linked image for what our character texture is. I'm gonna click this X to get rid of it. And as you can see, our character is now uh, very sad and weird looking and I'm gonna click open and I'm gonna navigate to the folder that I have my skin in. All right, so now I'm in the folder that has the skin that I wanna use and I have this one here, which is my character skin that I altered with a blank face basically to uh, fit the uh, rig that we have here. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna go up here to open image and I'm gonna click that. And as you can see here, Blender has replaced that character skin with our own and uh, should be good to go there. So that's just one way of doing it. I'm not 100% sure uh, if there's other ways to do it or not, but this seems to work for me and that's typically what I do. So that's what I did. So we wanna get rid of this window now. All you have to do is grab this cross hatch area and click and drag up and you'll see that it changes the color and there is this slight arrow there in the middle. And when I let go, it uh, gets rid of that window and that's just a little slight insight into how you can customize Windows interface. Uh, and so we have the skin texture changed, but the eyes didn't change color, as you may have noticed. So if I click on the eye there, then you'll see the Steve Iris is now selected under our materials tab. And it's basically just using this color. It's not even using nodes. So if I change this, if I click on that color, then I should be able to drag this around and get whatever look that I want. So I'm just gonna see if I can give them some kind of dark brown eyes like so. And there you go. Now we have Steve with my skin and the changed eye color. So that should be how you can do it. Again, these things might change depending on the rig that you're using. So you'll have to use your best judgment there. But with this rig, that's the way I'm accomplishing it for this tutorial. So that's going to be it for this tutorial, guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. I hope it wasn't too confusing or off base with bad information. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. If you want to support the channel and help me continue doing these tutorials and whatnot, feel free to check out the Patreon link in the description. Otherwise, that's going to be it for me. So thanks for joining, guys, and I will see you in the next video.